Hello and welcome to this Formlabs webinar. This is a shortened version of the original broadcast. If you'd like to view the content in full, please click on the link below. Um, so thank you everybody for, for joining us today. As uh, Stan mentioned earlier, my name is Chris. I'm a hardware product manager over here and I also have the, the luxury of working on a lot of our uh, materials product management efforts also. Um, so I work closely with, uh, with Connor and our, our engineering team to make sure that we're, we're working on the, the best products to deliver a lot of value to our customers. So I want to start off uh, first section uh, for today on, on my end, SLS 3D printing. I uh, want to just give a little uh, preview of, you know, what is this? So uh, this is uh, uh, one of the, you know, three 3D printing technologies that Dan mentioned that make up um, the, the vast majority of 3D printing that occurs on planet Earth today. Um, selective laser sintering is uh, used to produce a lot of parts, but the machines are a little less prevalent than we have with FDM and SLA machines, which are uh, generally have been a little bit lower price point and are a bit more accessible. And what Formlabs has been doing is trying to uh, bring that accessibility that we see with FDM and SLA 3D printing um, and bring that, that same level of accessibility um, to, to SLS also. So quickly to, to overview the process, uh, give you a little primer in case you're not so familiar. Um, SLS is a, a powder bed fusion based process. So our um, input feedstock that we put into the printer is not a filament, it's not a liquid resin, it's a, uh, it's a plastic powder. Um, and what we do for the process is we start off with a, essentially an empty build chamber. Um, could imagine almost a, a very fancy bucket. And the bottom of this bucket, uh, the floor of it is able to, to lower in a controlled way. Um, so what we do to make a layer is we'll, we'll drop down the floor of that, that build chamber um, ever so slightly. For our materials, we're, we're typically printing at 110 micron layer height. So we'll drop down the, um, the floor of the build chamber by 110 microns. Uh, then we have a, uh, what we call a recoder, which is a, a counter rotating roller um, that pushes a very flat layer of powder across um, over the bed, um, filling up that little gap that we made. We heat that powder very evenly with, uh, with infrared lamps uh, that are suspended above the, the print bed. And then finally, once it's up at a nice even uniform temperature right below where this plastic is going to start to melt together, uh, we use a laser that we control with uh, galvanometers to uh, or little mirrors that uh, we control the angle of to to draw and draw out the image of the layer. And you can see on the, the right side here kind of what that looks like. Um, and then to build up a whole part, we repeat that process over and over again in the fashion of 3D printing uh, to build up our, our final geometry. Uh, so a few of the, the top line benefits, some of the things that, that really um, I, I personally love, at least about SLS. Uh, first is that you're, you're working in, uh, in thermoplastics. We're, we're typically working with nylons, especially on Fuse uh, series printers. And the kind of the beauty of this is, you know, with, with some other 3D printing processes, sometimes we get to use familiar materials. Uh, FDM is a great case in point for this, where we're using materials, thermoplastics that have been used for a long time. Uh, and we get to use, we have the luxury of using, you know, thermoplastics here. Nylons are a relatively familiar material. A lot of the products we see around us in our day-to-day -day lives are, are made of nylons. Uh, but uh, also we have this kind of added benefit of the, the process of, uh, of being able to, to achieve higher um, geometric complexity um, almost for, for free. And we'll elaborate a little bit more on this slide here. Um, as you can see, we kind of... Uh, due to the nature of the process, have all of our parts suspended in this powder cake uh, that we have to, to pull our parts out of at the end. But what this means is that we don't have any mechanically uh, attached um, support structures there that we need to, to clip off or sand down after the process. Um, we do have a step where we have to extract our parts from this powder cake, um, which is a little bit of work, but um, you know, with, with brushes and a little bit of cleaning, um, we can get a nice uh, professional and aesthetic surface uh, without having to do sanding, grinding, and a lot of touch-up machining um, that you might have to do with other processes. So this earns us a lot of uh, um, uh, design complexity uh, for free, essentially, with this process. 
And then uh, finally, one of the, the big things I, I really love about SLS is that I can print a lot of things um, since it, we can uh, essentially nest parts at, you know, at will within this, this powder bed cake um, that our parts are, are built within. We can stack them up um, and we don't have to worry about um, parts being you know, suspended one above the other where you know, perhaps on an FDM printer, um, they, they might knock over being on this big bed of support material. Um, in SLS, we can nest our parts in our powder cake um, and you can print easily, you know, one part, 10 parts, 100 parts. And I think some of our customers print up to uh, several thousand parts in a single build of, uh, of little parts that can go into other assemblies. Uh, so you're able to really get a lot of parts out and, uh, and print them in, you know, roughly a day or so. So we have a little uh, product overview for what we offer. We have the, the few series printers that, that Form Labs offers today. Um, they're really designed to be office friendly, workshop friendly. We've done a lot of work um, to make sure that you can, can have these machines uh, nearby in your office space, your workshop space, and have the, the peace of mind that uh, these are products that you don't really have to worry about um, operating right next to you. Um, so that's uh, one of the key benefits is we're, we're really focusing in on making it so you can put these machines anywhere, uh, fit them through a standard doorway, plug them into a standard outlet, use active ventilation and, and air filtering to make sure that you can uh, have these, uh, not necessarily in a dedicated room, but nearby. Uh, another benefit is that we found that our customers have really fallen in love with this uh, uh, product and overall technology for, for being able to, to produce rapid prototypes, rapid tooling, kind of this bread and butter of 3D printing applications uh, traditionally. And now they're finding they can make even better prototypes, even better tools. Um, but it also has served as uh, you know, expanding out what, what our customers do. Uh, with 3D printing where uh, some are using it for, for small run production for some components that go into other assemblies. Um, and maybe that's their final um, uh, manufacturing method for this. Uh, but it also can serve as a bridge in case you wanna you know, print out perhaps a couple hundred, couple thousand components um, as you're waiting for uh, perhaps injection molded tooling. And the, this can serve as a bridge on early batches to production in some cases. Uh, then finally, very easy to use, plug and play. We're using the same preform software that Formlabs has worked very hard to make a very streamlined, easy experience. There's a, a little bit of setup, but you know, the, the day that you receive Fuse, you can open up the box, set it up, and be printing your first parts on that same day. It's not a multi-day, not a complicated setup. Um, then a little compare and contrast. We have two SLS 3D printers. One's Fuse One, the other one's the Fuse One Plus 30 Watt, which we released uh, Fuse One back in January of 2021. And uh, Fuse One Plus 30 Watt, we uh, released back in uh, last July uh, of 2022. And uh, for the, the Fuse One Plus, a few of the, the changes I want to highlight uh, here are uh, first, we upgraded the, the laser to a 30 watt laser, which almost uh, doubles our print speed. Uh, so you can get your parts out a lot faster. We've upgraded our uh, powder handling system and our, our hopper and how we, how we deliver powder into the printer itself. Um, and this has enabled us to, to add new materials to the workflow, uh, particularly carbon fiber nylon. Uh, I'll let Connor dig into that a little bit more later on. And then uh, finally, we've added the ability to purge out the oxygen inside the printer with inert gas, uh, which allows us to have better material properties and better material recyc uh, recyclability and reusability. So I want to just step through the workflow to, uh, to demystify to maybe those who have not um, experienced this before. Um, but we, we start off in Preform, which is the same software that we use for our SLA 3D printers, the Form product line. And we're able to accept STL and OBJ file types. And uh, we really take a, a lot of the, um, the, uh, the technical aspects uh, away so that you don't have to worry about you know, speeds, feeds, all the things that uh, you know, a, a trained operator really needs to figure out over months or years and become a, a really skilled uh, professional at. We, we really try to focus in on making this a uh, click and print experience as much as we possibly can. Um, so we, we give some, you know, kind of the standard controls you'd expect. You can uh, grow your parts, shrink them down, rotate, you know, scale in each direction, change your orientation view. Um, we've also added the ability to array parts. So you can, um, if you start with one part, 
add many to, uh, to a build. Um, and then the ability to nest those, so optimize so that you're, you're optimizing for your print time uh, by packing these parts together efficiently. Uh, next, we prepare our printer. One of the things that I, I really love about Fuse is that we, we also make this a, a process where you don't have to memorize it, you don't have to learn it. Um, you can be trained on it the first time, but we keep these instructions on printer preparation on the user interface and they pop up every time you want to start a print job. So we'll tell you uh, for every print job, make sure you have your, your build chamber in there. So you need that to print. Um, take a look at your optical cassette to make sure that it's not clouded or doesn't have any debris on it. Because if your laser is going through um, the optical cassette, which essentially serves as a little window to keep the uh, delicate optical components um, away uh, from and prevent them from being contaminated by any, any products from the, the printing process, uh, this optical cassette forms the protective barrier between. So it's good to take it out, uh, take a look, looks clean, put it back in. Um, and then make sure your, your hopper is full of powder so that you have enough material in the printer to, to finish your print. Um, so these are steps we look at every time, but pretty straightforward. We just make sure we have a build chamber, make sure we have enough powder, make sure that, uh, that the optics look nice and clean. Uh, from there, all you have to do is hit print right on the user interface. You hit the, the print button on the, uh, the job that you just uploaded. Um, and, and Fuse takes care of everything from there. Uh, we have a nice uh, video stream so that you can see on the, the user interface um, and also remotely what's happening with uh, the printer at any given moment in time and keep an eye on things. Um, also, since it's a, a laser device, we don't have any windows into the, the, the volume itself. Uh, so this is another aspect that drives a little bit of extra safety so we don't have to worry about stray laser beams uh, hurting somebody. It's all contained um, and the only viewable way to, to look into the printers through this video camera, so inherently safe. Uh, next, we have cool down in printer. So after the, the print is complete, lasing is done, uh, it's going to be warm, uh, hot even. We usually print it around anywhere between maybe 150 to uh, maybe 200 degrees Celsius in the chamber. So it gets to be a bit of an oven in there. And uh, to prevent our parts from, from warping by cooling them too quickly, we recommend leave that build chamber in there until it cools down to 100 degrees Celsius, indicated on the, the user interface. Takes about an hour, and then with gloves, since it'll be hot, you can take it out, put it aside, put in a new uh, build chamber, and uh, start your next print job uh, while your current build chamber cools down a little bit. Uh, then we have, as I alluded to, cool down outside of the, the printer itself. So it'll be, you know, maybe I have my build chamber, it's 100 degrees Celsius still. I'm going to wait for that to cool down a little bit until it's at least warm to the touch, but not scalding. Um, Sift is our, our product for, for depowdering the parts, um, extracting the parts from that powder cake. And uh, what we can do from there is put our build chamber into there. We'll monitor the temperature and tell us, hey, now is a, a time where you can extract your parts from the cake without worrying about hurting yourself uh, by burning since it's too hot. Uh, the next part extraction, once the, the, the build chamber and our powder cake is just warm but not hot, um, we can eject it using Fuse uh, Sift. And from there, you just get your hands in there, um, recommend gloves. Uh, move the powder cake over into the work area and you see this kind of uh, uh, mesh uh, that's circular here in both of these photos that allows powder to, to fall down um, and then it's sifted and then it can be reused and your parts stay on top. We try to brush them off a little bit to get as much powder off so we can reuse as much as possible. Uh, but uh, from there, we go to our final step, which is part cleaning. Uh, we generally recommend a media blaster, um, which uses, uh, you know, typically glass media is what we recommend, and that uses compressed air, glass media, and blasts it out the part. Um, and that gets off that final little bit of residual powder that might be on the surface um, after, after the brushing that we do in SIFT. Um, and these, these products, Form Labs doesn't sell any of these today, but they go from anywhere from a couple hundred dollars that I can buy on McMaster car and have it delivered in a few days up to, you know, very expensive production units. Uh, so that, that summarizes the workflow. And at this point, I'll hand it over to, uh, to Connor to go over a few of our uh, materials that we have in our portfolio. Thank you for tuning into this webinar preview from Form Labs. To view the content in full, please click on the link below. Alternatively, if you'd like to get more information on our products and services, then please visit our website.